Welcome to Get Cooking in a Cloud, where we share the best recipes to apply in your cloud kitchen. I'm Priyanka, and in this episode, we're wrapping up the mobile backend app recipe with Jen. It's bittersweet that this is our last mobile app backend recipe. I've had so much fun cooking with you. Oh, well, it's been great having you visit my kitchen. So tell me about this last recipe. What are we cooking up today? Today's solution combines REST or gRPC with Compute Engine. Ah, uh, so the ingredients then are some sort of API with REST or gRPC and Compute Engine? Exactly. So I talked about Compute Engine in the first season. I'll link the video below for any of our viewers who didn't catch it. Well, Compute Engine lets you create and run virtual machines on Google infrastructure. You have admin rights to the server and full control over its configuration. But this also means that you are responsible for updates and maintenance. Exactly, Priyanka. Compute Engine gives you more configuration control than my previous recipes, but that puts the onus on the developer to monitor and maintain it. Now, there are two main protocols used to connect to Compute Engine instances, REST and gRPC. Like all of my recipes, the choice you make here really depends on your app's particular needs. So I know that REST is an architecture for network apps that uses HTTP requests to post, read, and delete data. You can build REST APIs on Compute Engine, the App Engine Standard Environment, and the App Engine Flexible Environment instances that your app can call to access the backend service you build. In this case, we're specifying Compute Engine. Yes, and gRPC is a framework that makes it possible for a mobile app to directly call methods on a backend service as if it were a local object. gRPC uses the HTTP2 standard, which introduces bidirectional streaming, flow control, header compression, and the ability to multiplex requests over a single TCP connection. You can use gRPC to make your mobile app more bandwidth efficient and to reduce latency between your app and backend service running on GCP. You can write gRPC clients and servers in any of gRPC's supported languages. So you could, for instance, create a gRPC server in Java with clients in Go, Python, or Ruby. That is great overview of gRPC. We also talked about REST and Compute Engine so far. In which scenario would you recommend this recipe? I recommend Compute Engine with REST or gRPC for porting an existing backend service running on an on-premises server or a virtual machine, and backend services that require a custom server or third-party libraries. So this could be good solution for handling my legacy on-prem code for Priyaka's Kitchen. Exactly. But if your app requires automatic real-time data synchronization across devices, I recommend using one of our Firebase solutions instead. What if I prefer automatic maintenance and scaling? Well, then this isn't the solution for you, since you must maintain and upgrade the server yourself, and you must manually configure and manage an autoscaler. Where can developers learn more about using Compute Engine with REST or gRPC in their apps? There is an end-to-end -end sample app called Sticky Notes that sends text to the service, which responds by returning a generated image. The Sticky Notes sample is available in both REST and gRPC versions, so you can compare the two protocols. All right, Jen, that sounds great. I cannot wait to take a look at the Sticky Notes sample app. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. With this, we have wrapped up the mobile app backend recipes on Google Cloud. If you would like to know more about today's recipe or any of the ones we have covered in this season, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, then check out the other episodes in the series. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can be notified about new episodes of Get Cooking in Cloud as well as other great Google Cloud content.